wasn't ready. Hi. Um, my name is Chow, and welcome to my channel, the Stagehand Tutor. Um, this may or may not be your first time here. This is my first time here, though. And, yeah, like, I don't want this to be like a, like a YouTube channel that is like super duper serious. Like, yeah, I'm going to be talking about some stuff that I think people should know, but also like. I just kind of want to get used to doing this first. So I'm going to be like scrapbooking and talking to you guys because yeah, this is my channel. So whatever. Um, <laughs> I do have some writing points here or some ta speaking points. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm here today to talk to you about what is a stagehand. Um, first of all, I'd like to say one thing. Um, where you might be geographically located somewhere where you need or it makes sense to you to join a union. I will not tell you what to do. I will not, probably will not talk about that much um, in general. Um, just because I know that like people on both sides may have strong opinions about that. And uh, I personally don't to have a conversation with anyone uh, about that so <laughs> you do whatever you want to do all I ask is that everyone please respect the way people decide to live their lives and make money so yeah um, yeah and so we move on according to Wikipedia like kind of like the best definition I found like of a stagehand. A stagehand is a person who works backstage or behind the scenes in theaters, film, television, or location performance. Uh, yeah, so I think that's like pretty good explanation there. Um, you basically usually work on shows. Uh, live entertainment <laughs> um, so I'll be going through the different types of stagehand technician sort of roles and to start with I will start with uh, the basic stagehand usually what everyone starts out as okay so, as a basic stagehand, um, I got my pictures here. Um, as a basic stagehand, usually you start there, right? So, you're usually like not really specialized in a specific like department, and you're kind of being shown what to do. By other, like you're helping other technicians uh, set up and you're usually being shown what to do um, you just follow directions um, sometimes you're pushing boxes it's more manual labor and like I said you're usually being directed so you're the technician that's usually directing you is usually telling you how to like hang a light or like you're plugging cables in but they're telling you like okay plug it in here and then here and then repeat um you might be running feeder you might be coiling cables um and there are people who 
get really good at this and just do that and that's totally fine like everyone's job is equally important in the setting up of a show we need all of those people right so moving on the next type of stage hand i will be explaining i mean it's not really like a really long explanation if i'm being honest is a carpenter a carpenter uh might be building big scenic pieces and might be building the stage itself like it's it's a it's um manual labor and uh it's hard work it's hard work i don't want to do that for sure i don't want to i don't want to build the stage to be honest um yeah i won't be throwing back to be honest um and then we have <laughs> i'll be i'll be talking about these three together you have audio video and lighting and basically usually these technicians are setting up or um, leading stagehands to set up their equipment. They have to be competent in how to set up that equipment and they're specialized in it. So um, they have to be com competent in setting up that equipment and knowing how to use it. Um, next, uh, I could have included them in with uh, you know of audio technician video and lighting technicians um but next we have special effects and yeah so like the same thing sets up their equipment leads a team of stagehands to set up the equipment and needs to be competent in setting up and using the equipment right um, the only reason, like, I didn't include them is because I kind of want to explain, like, just additional, like, little info. Um, special effects is usually, like, let's say pyro or, like, there's some sort of, like, compressed air, like, for, uh, confetti cannons that need to be done, set up during a show, for the show purposes and that is what like is included and in, you know it's probably not all that's included I I will have to like look more into it but this is a basic video right so um yeah that, that is SFX um props I think that's kind of self-explanatory um if I have my a uh, phone in the show a performer has a phone and they're like taking pictures and like flashes that phone may not be real it might just be a prop like it like especially if it like gets thrown like that's most definitely probably a prop so yeah um then you have wardrobe and wardrobe is costumes right so yeah um and then you have automation automation is uh cool it's fun um it is as defined by me <laughs> um computer aided movements of the stage or scenic pieces. Do you hear? Do you hear cat? That's weird. I don't have a cat. Just kidding. Anyways, 
Um, automation is like, so let's say you go to a concert and you, you look at the stage and like, there's like a guitar player here and like a drummer here and then like the middle part is empty but then all of a sudden like this is the middle part and then all of a sudden you see the performer just like come up and like be like and then like start singing that's uh automation that's 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 a lift or like <clears throat> you have like a runway and uh singer is walking down a runway and they stop but they're like stopped but they just start moving back that's a conveyor belt that's automation and and then <laughs> and then there's rigging and then there's rigging so with rigging uh Safety is everyone's business. But with rigging, there's, it's, it's a little more high risk. So I would say like in today's like live industry, live entertainment industry, um, rigging is like, the foundation for putting together a show um, other departments can't really get a lot accomplished without rigging having completed at least like a good amount you know like there's ways to work around rigging but rigging provides a way of suspending equipment for the other technicians so that's why it's kind of like I would say it's like foundation right and um, right now throughout this video is there a cat there oh my god <sighs> um, and right now throughout this video I have been talking like more like as if I'm thinking of going to an arena gig right um I mean like yeah and so but but that's not that's not it like like that's not it so like that's not like everything arena rigging like you you can go and work in like multiple places and I'll talk about that but um depending on you and where you're working depends on like there's very there's various different rigging positions and yeah and um sorry <laughs> um depending on where you're working there's different rigging positions um you've got like high riggers ground riggers sometimes they're called down riggers um you have production show riggers and rope access technicians um there's different there's different ones on top of that too but like on this channel i probably at least for a while will only like address to these types of rigging um Places you might work as a stagehand. So there you go. Places you might work as a stagehand. Arenas, stadiums, theater, TVs, movies, convention centers, amusement parks, cruise ships, ballrooms, um, festivals, outdoor venues. Um, yeah, there's. I mean, more ballrooms, hotels, um, I guess that's the same-ish, um, 
benefits of being in a stagehand. Uh, some benefits are traveling, especially like if you're on tour or you work on cruise ships um, or like sometimes you might have to move for like a season and um, on top of that, even if like you're a basic stagehand, sometimes like a certain city might not have enough people to work like they just get super busy and they just don't have enough people um sometimes it'll be like like i've done things where i'll be somewhere for like a week or two i'll get sent um yeah uh you get to meet loads of different people you especially like if you're traveling you get to meet a lot of different people from like sometimes like all over the country or like all over the world i feel like in general the u.s is kind of like a, a melting pot anyways but yes um it's, and if you're working on cruise ships like you definitely get to meet people from all over the world and like make so many friends that like they'll be like oh come visit me in like Brazil and like I'll take you to all the cool places um yeah and you can stay like they'll be like you can stay with me and I've done that actually like I had a best friend that I met up with I mean like he lived there but like I met up I went and visited them in Serbia and that was super cool got to see Serbia um it is definitely a unique experience like it's not something a lot like i mean once you're there there like there's a lot of people there like you don't expect it but there are a lot of people who like work in the industry but like a lot of times unless like your whole family's in the industry like you know a lot of times your family and your friends don't know really what it is what you do that's why i don't like really talking about it but um yeah like it's a unique experience and you get to say like hey i got to set up for this artist and it was pretty cool it was like super big like you don't expect it but um a lot of work goes into setting up for shows for performances um Sometimes you can watch the show while working, like if you get to work during the show, a lot of times you'll be able to watch. Um, I've been like in the venue, not throughout the whole shows sometimes, but like I'll just be there for the very tail end and I'm like, I never really listened to country music, but this person has the voice of an angel and then you just find more stuff that you like. Like, it's pretty cool. And it's pretty cool if you already like that artist too, you know? So, and sometimes, depending on where you work, your employer, sometimes you can get comp tickets. Those are free. For I don't know, it depends, like, um, I get show, free, free tickets to shows by the, by my employer, like, it has to be the same employer, like, production company, I guess you could call it, um, and, like, my old roommate used to work at a nightclub that like has shows like she was still in the industry in this nightclub and um she was able to get tickets to like that nightclub was owned by the same company that owned a specific theater and we were able to go see like really like a few times like really really like well-known artists and it was so cool like being like hey 
I mean, it was last minute, so I had to like go and tell my boss like, hey, I got tickets to to see this, and I really want to go. Like, and they were like, okay, fine, but you know, yeah. Um, that's pretty much all I have for this first video. I mean, all I have, like, it's been, like, 20 minutes, right? And I also kind of ramble, but it's okay. Um, anyways, um, the only other thing I would say is if you are, um, already a stagehand, plan to become a stagehand, um, one thing I would suggest is unless you have a full-time position, you should have another job, like especially in the first year, because, um, I mean, if you live in a city where events are more like, like you live in a, in a big city where there's a lot of events um slow seasons might be less frequent but um they still happen so like you may not be well prepared for that to happen like if you go a month without work and you didn't know that that was gonna happen that's gonna be very unfortunate and I would not want to see that happen to you to any of you my friends so um yeah at least for the first year just so you can see like around what time of year might be a slow season for you um keep another job on the side even if it's like something like DoorDash or something I don't know it's uh worth keeping for a while so yeah that is all i have for you and bye <laughs> okay